games are big business, but are sometimes short of big surprises. You know the next Rockstar game is going to sell a gazillion copies, as sure as FIFA 22 follows FIFA 21, or General Screaming follows Trevor Phillips. They were right! Hipsters are dead! But once in a while a game quietly sneaks out of the shadows, or dabs aggressively in the daylight, and takes the world by storm. And hits really can come from anywhere. In 2010, a Pac-Man Google Doodle was played one billion times in just three days. Best thing is, if you suck at Pac-Man, you're well placed to search for tips. So let's celebrate the surprises that gobbled up gamers like a sentient pie chart gobbles up dots. And take a look at these, the seven huge video game phenomena that no one saw coming. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, or PUBG for short, is as full of survival mechanics as it is free of actual chicken dinners. How am I supposed to eat this, PUBG? The premise of the game is that 100 extremely violent people parachute onto an island, grab any killing implement they can find, and then bash or shoot each other in an ever-decreasing circle until just one remains to receive the winner winner fictitious chicken dinner. I'd even take a bargain bucket from KFC at this point. I think I've earned it. Of course, describing the rules of PUBG seems slightly redundant given that as of March this year, the game has shifted over 1 billion copies on mobile and 70 million on PC and console. That's not including the less violent version released in China called Game for Peace, in which fighters emit coloured smoke instead of blood. I don't know, it doesn't look that peaceful to me. No one could have seen this wild success coming, especially Brendan Player Unknown Green, what were his parents thinking with that middle name, who started riffing on the idea that would become the Battle Royale genre back in 2013 as a mod for military sim Armour 2 called DayZ Battle Royale. It was inspired by the Japanese film Battle Royale in which 42 school kids fight to the death on an island, not to be confused with The Hunger Games which had the same premise but also a boy used cake icing skills to disguise himself as a log. These early mods developed a cult following and saw Sony Online Entertainment licensing Green's Battle Royale concept for their own game H1Z1, but you'll notice that game isn't on this list. No, Green was approached by Korean studio Bluepoint Games to take his battle to the death and build it into the standalone game we know today as PUBG. It was here that they added the parachute drop that kicks off the action and designed the iconic island setting of Erangal, named after Green's daughter. Because nothing says fatherly love like a mass virtual graveyard. Released into early access in March 2017, the core magic of the Battle Royale concept was finally untethered from fussy mods, and even in this buggy early form, just the fact that it was a neat standalone experience saw PUBG rushing up the charts. By October, it had dethroned League of Legends with 2 million concurrent players on Steam and had press writing bold statements like, surprise hits of such scale are almost unheard of in today's gaming world. To which I say, this video isn't called one video game phenomenon we didn't see coming. Stick around. Typical, you wait for one era-defining Battle Royale game to turn up and then two come along at once. I know, wait, that's buses. But Fortnite also has those, so it still works. And I'm not doing it again. Since its release in September 2017, Fortnite Battle Royale has devoured our world more easily than, well, Galactus the Devourer of Worlds, who actually appeared in Fortnite being blown away by a missile-firing school bus. I admire that enthusiasm, but again, you're driving a bomb, so let's be careful out there. If only the Fantastic Four had known his weakness was public transport. In its first year alone, Fortnite amassed 125 million players, and at the last count, in May 2020, had hit 350 million. No wonder it has attracted superstar performers such as Ariana Grande, seen here doing her best impression of the final boss in a Platinum game. After all, what's an encore if not a second health bar? And we didn't see it coming. 
It's easy to forget that the Fortnite story began very differently, with the original pitch revolving around scavenging building materials and lots of road signs to construct defenses against undead hordes at night and presumably doom anyone trying to pass their driving test. This is the portion of the game now known as Fortnite Save the World. Going back to that original trailer, it's very weird to see its horror vibes, given that the scariest thing that happens in Battle Royale is the threat of getting woken up in the middle of the night by a Diplo concert. Honestly, this is ridiculous. Turn it down, Diplo! Some of us have to get up early and be murdered by 99 teenagers tomorrow. Honestly, I'm gonna write a strongly worded letter to the Boney Burbs Town Council. Save the World mode released in Early Access in July 2017 and true to its name, didn't set the world aflame. This coincided with PUBG's explosive growth, which was delivering enough chicken dinners to leave even Colonel Sanders biting his nails, which, let me remind you, he'd already licked clean. So the decision was made to recreate the Battle Royale format using the existing parts of Fortnite. Now, I'm not saying that Fortnite ripped off PUBG. I don't need to, because Epic said it. In a blog before the game's launch, Epic wrote, Yeah, we made a PvP mode for Fortnite. We love Battle Royale games like PUBG and thought Fortnite would make a great foundation for our own version. The magic of the idea was combining the lethal hook of Last Man Standing with a far more accessible world of flying school buses, treasure chests and cans of slurp juice. It's PUBG, but nice. PUBG rated, if you will. That accessibility combined with a technical stability that long escaped PUBG made Fortnite a very easy game to love, and being available on more platforms early on, it could easily infiltrate every household on the planet. And if you don't like it, feel free to explain that to Ariana and her giant hammer. Are bigger phenomena on this list than Rocket League, but this is the only one that lets you do a flying kick in a DeLorean, so it is kind of the secret winner. In the summer of 2015, Rocket League was the go-to multiplayer game of choice. Battlegrounds was but a glint in player unknown's eye and living rooms exploded with the glorious sound of bumper on ball and the less glorious sound of controllers smashing against wall. No! Get, get Mike get, away get from the... Get him away! <laughs> kick! Kill him! Get him away! Kill him! <laughs> you know you've got a multiplayer hit when blood pressure rises and Rocket League saw TVs being subjected to the kind of spicy language they hadn't heard since the split-screen golden years of GoldenEye. Or as it was known back then... What job, you Good times. Key to Rocket League's success was developer Psyonix's decision to release it as a freebie on PlayStation Plus, a move that saw 6 million copies downloaded. Unlike the other spectator sports of the day, your Dota's and League of Legends, you don't need a degree in the game to understand what's going on. At the same time, the gif-friendly action of the game saw it dominating Reddit and pulling in players in their millions with the promise of impossible goals and easy-to-follow victories. I liked it when the car scored a goal. It was a success no one saw coming, least of all Psyonix, who were massively unprepared for the players flooding their servers. Talking later at GDC, design director Corey Davis said if they hadn't had the money they made from the PC version to fund the servers for the free PS4 version, then quote, I can't really imagine what we would have done if we'd shipped only on PlayStation 4 and got that many users. I imagine the internet would be its normal forgiving self and just simply waited for its next game of car football. Rocket League has now sold 40 million copies and what makes that even more amazing is that it's actually the second time Psyonix has attempted to make car football a thing. Yes, in 2008 the studio had released largely the same game on PS3 called Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars, or SARP for short. Or, as Corey Davis puts it, Supersonic acrobatic rocket-powered battle cars, the worst named game of all time. So to say Rocket League came out of nowhere is maybe a little unfair. It simply took a much better name and seven long years of polishing. They could have done it in half the time if they'd had a DeLorean. Uh, you do realise the real car is not a time machine? Uh, then how did Marty McFly travel back to 1955? Tell me that. Yeah, okay, fair point. How did no one see Fall Guys coming? I mean, look at it! 
We're hardly talking about Solid Snake here. Dude. Oh no, oh no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, Jay, no, oh, man. Just, no. no. Oh, I took a right tumble that time. Yet to sneak up on us, it did, arriving on August 4th, 2020, and instantly crushing the gaming charts under a stampede of colorful feet. Said feet belong to an army of jelly beans, and it's these beans that players attempt to steer through knockout minigames as 60 contenders are whittled down to one champion. Truly, the wildest thing anyone has done with jelly beans since Jelly Belly created a bean flavour that was either peach or bath. It's bath. Released on PC and PS4, Fall Guys amassed 1.5 million players in 24 hours, which was enough to cause major server issues. We could have kicked off about that, but hey, you try filling yourself with 1.5 million jelly beans and see if you still function. I'm giving it the old college try though. Certainly, players forgave the game's early hiccups and the game shifted 2 million copies in its first week on PC. Two weeks after launch, it had an estimated 15.6 million active players on PlayStation 4 alone far eclipsing the 6 million copies that The Last of Us Part 2 sold in the same amount of time. Who knew that people would rather tumble happily around a rainbow coloured wonderland than brutalise a dog with a rusty pipe? Weird. Where did that success come from? Fall Guys is something of a perfect storm. For starters, it's incredibly easy to understand and pick up and play. There are no language barriers as every event taps into a primal human need. Get to the end, avoid the holes, don't get crushed by a giant mango. Compare that to Minecraft, a game so complicated it now has a 3,000 word wiki page explaining the concept of an egg. Secondly, the team at Mediatonic did a great job getting Fall Guys in front of eyeballs before it launched, using its beta weekends to get big names playing on Twitch. And it worked! Twitch viewers watched over 100 million hours of Fall Guys that month. To put that in perspective, that's almost enough time to watch the Snyder Cut of Justice League one time. You had a game anyone could play that everyone was watching. And the icing on the cake, if you had PlayStation Plus, you already owned it. Yes, given away as the freebie for August, it really felt like previous PS Plus superstar Rocket League had met its match. Or as PlayStation pundits put it at the time, it really does feel like Rocket League has finally met its match. Hey, get your own lines, pundits! Almost one year on, it continues to kill off jelly beans in their thousands, with a new season themed on The Jungle Book, sure to be sheer carnage, and the game also hosts impressive charity drives. They even auctioned off a character skin that was almost won by a B-Day company. Speaking of the bathroom, where is it? I think I just ate another bath one. There is an imposter among us. Not me. I saw you around the vents, though. Excuse me? You're the suspicious one. No one saw Among Us coming, but then maybe that's exactly what the game wanted. No video game phenomenon is sneakier than this 2018 social deduction game. In various sci-fi settings, up to 15 paranoid crewmates attempt to complete tasks, while one or more alien imposters sabotage those activities and bump players off. <laughs> Find a body and the crew convenes to vote out the most suspicious player, and by vote out, I mean literally out. You're booted from the airlock regardless of your actual innocence. If that sounds familiar, it's because it draws inspiration from social deduction party games like Mafia, which is a similar exercise in weeding out villains except without an airlock, because you're probably playing in a living room. The Among Us developers at Inner Sloth were not the first to attempt to turn this kind of party game into a video game. There had already been, for example, Werewolves Within, which was an adaptation of the Mafia-like party game in which someone is a secret werewolf. So that means either uh, Gabe actually is the Houndsman, uh, or he's the werewolf. What elevates Among Us above these previous games is immersion. You explore the ship and deal with the threat of being stabbed in the back in real time. At least that should have elevated Among Us above those games. But it initially released to no fanfare in June 2018. It averaged out at 13 concurrent players and fell to two just six months later. And this is not a concept that works with two people. So if it's not me doing the sabotage... So why is Among Us on this list? Thank Twitch, which is something people rarely say these days, and a wave of early adopters in South Korea, Brazil and Mexico who realised the dramatic potential of the game on their streams and pushed it to the attention of some of the biggest streamers around in July 2020. Just like that, a sleeper hit woke up. Over the next two months, the game was downloaded 60 million times, which is more backstabbing than eight series of Game of Thrones combined. More airlocks too, although that's not really Game of Thrones' fault. 
Just like an imposter eyeing up a potential victim, Among Us bided its time before exploding into action. In October last year, it saw 4 million concurrent players, slightly more impressive than 2, and shifted 15 million copies in the free epic giveaway alone. Dang. All right, all right, mm. Mike. Yes. Explain yourself. What, do you, what, what is there to explain? I just found you in the room with a dead ether. A smarter writer might draw some kind of link between lockdown and the fantasy of murdering slash ejecting people from a confined space, so time will tell if it holds onto its crown in less restricted times. Oh, and if anyone asks, I was in electrical. Doing wires. Where were you in the summer of 2016? If your answer isn't lobbing balls at an imaginary blast toys on a railway embankment somewhere, you're a damn liar. Launched in July 2016, Pokemon Go whipped the world into a Pokemon hunting frenzy, drawing wannabe trainers out of their homes and into augmented reality wonderland as they sniffed out cute critters that put the R into AR and flocked to landmarks that doubled as gyms and Pokestops. For those not in the know, it simply resembled a gang of very strange people wandering blindly into the road or getting excited about thin air. Come on, come on. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but for those lost in the game, it's like living the complete Pokemon fantasy for real. Apart from the bit where there's a Mr. Mime in your house, no one needs that. The genius of Pokemon Go is that it turns every player into a walking billboard for the game, while also stirring up a deep nostalgia, reminding a generation of millennials how much they used to enjoy crushing animals into balls. As a result, records were smashed. Pokemon Go was downloaded 130 million times in a month and became the fastest mobile game to gross $100 million, which it did in just 20 days. By December 2017, it had been downloaded 800 million times. What makes that even more impressive is that Trubbish didn't join the game until January 2020, so it was doing those numbers without a sentient bag of garbage. Unreal! Did anyone see this coming? Depends if you expected a video game phenomenon to come from an obscure studio within Google. What about the Pac-Man doodle? You only know about that because I told you about it 10 minutes ago. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Mm. Anyway, Google. Pokemon Go developers Niantic emerged from the remnants of the team that had built Google Earth, testing out their AR ideas in Ingress, which was another location-based game where players compete to control points found at local landmarks. Portals emit exotic matter into our world, and that matter has certain effects on our world. The trailer sells Ingress as like being part of an elite team of hackers uncovering deep conspiracies in international cities, when in reality it's more like tapping your phone outside a local Nando's. Amazingly, it was an April Fool's joke that set the Pokeball rolling. In 2014, Google partnered with the Pokemon Company and Nintendo to cook up Google Maps Pokemon Challenge, which was both an April Fool's joke pretending to be a real game of finding Pokemon around the globe, and also the only bearable April Fool's joke in history. This jokey Pokemon Challenge paved the way for the real Pokemon Go which in turn paved the way for everyone at Niantic and the Pokemon Company to swim in a huge Scrooge McDuck-style swimming pool filled with gold. Pokemon Go was so big it spawned a series of imitators that we really didn't see coming. How about Garfield Go, which asked, what if instead of 700 monsters you were hunting one Garfield? Garfield looks as impressed as we are. Or there's No Moscow, where you explore the city capturing snaps with famous Russian figures. Rasputin, I choose you. Suddenly, Pokemon Go's success makes a lot more sense. If there's one thing more embarrassing than a video game phenomenon you didn't see coming, it's a video game phenomenon you didn't even know existed. Roblox is a platform for user-generated games, which is a boring way of saying it's a buckwild wonderland where anything can happen. One minute you're in a vomiting simulator, and the next you're exploring a model of Paris. It began in 2006 with what looked like a load of Lego men hitting the protein shakes, but despite that nightmarish sight, it has quietly snowballed into one of the biggest games on the planet, with 150 million players. Roblox is massive and has been massive for some time. It's on everyone's radar now because they started selling shares this year and have a market value of $38 billion. 
Put that in context, 38 billion would buy you 16 Minecrafts or four Bethesdas. Oh, maybe they could get Starfield out quicker if all four of them worked on it simultaneously. Oh, who am I kidding? It'd be 16 new versions of Skyrim, wouldn't it? It sounds like a ludicrous valuation for a game that resembles a load of Tic Tacs doing cosplay, but the stats suggest everyone is playing except for me. In July 2020, people played for 3 billion hours, and it's estimated that 75% of American children aged 9 to 12 play regularly. Those figures are lower in the UK because all British children play with are hoop and stick, when they're not up cleaning chimneys, obviously. Creators have published more than 20 million games on the platform, with some players making over a million dollars a year from selling items in their games for in-game currency Robux, which can then be converted into real money. Roblox is now so big, it hosts games that are phenomena in their own right. Pet Simulation Adopt Me, within Roblox, had 1.6 million concurrent players in April and has been visited over 20.4 billion times. Remind me again why we're not outside Roblox? There you go friends, those were seven huge video game phenomena that nobody saw coming. Um, unless maybe you did see them coming, in which case why didn't you get out in front of them and make those games for yourself, huh? I saw them coming. If you're so smart. Well then why didn't you make your battle royale, Andy? I didn't want to spoil it for anyone else. So I yeah, that's, that's to Andy. A surprise. It's very selfless. Yeah. yeah. He just he simply wouldn't make the next PUBG before PUBG. Yeah, I thought so. that should give someone else a chance. Yeah, very magnanimous. Meanwhile, if you would like to watch another video from outside Xbox instead of making the next huge video game phenomenon, then why not check out the playlist on screen right now, where there are literally hundreds, hundreds of videos a bit like this one, and a new one coming every single week. Check it out.